What this holiday is about is about Jesus Christ. I mean, that's what Christmas is about. It's never, it's not been, the origin isn't about Santa Claus. That's been brought into the culture. That's been brought into the tradition. That's something that's trying to replace Jesus Christ and replace God and replace the Holy Bible and say, oh yeah, this is just what we do. It's like, well, why do we give, you know, people want to answer that as, as this culture gets more and more wicked. But see, I love the fact that there's still a day and this is still like the big holiday in our country. I mean, if you look at it, even it surpasses Independence Day, right? Which should be a very important holiday as well, just for the country nationally as the you know, Declaration of Independence. This is when, the, you know, that's, that's kind of an important holiday for, for a nation, for a group of people. But even more important than that, of course, and rightfully so, would be a holiday honoring God, honoring Jesus Christ, honoring the Lord. This is where, I mean, this is why, um, I mean, everybody gets off of work. This is just a, a very serious holiday. And unfortunately, these days, it's easy to get caught up in everything else that's going on. It's easy to get distracted about what the real meaning of Christmas is. And thank God that we have so many people that showed up to church tonight on Christmas Day, even though there may be other things going on in your lives, other activities, other events, or other places that you can be. And look, I'm not trying to disparage anyone who didn't make it to church tonight. I mean, you do what you want to do. I know people are out of town. I know people are sick and there's all kinds of other stuff going on. But of any day to make it into church, how about a day where we're going to actually like, rep or, you know, honor the Lord Jesus Christ? I remember receiving flack in, in years past from different people who were close to me about going to church service and leaving a family function in order to go to church on Christmas. And to me, it just it boggles my mind because the people who give me our time are Christian. And they, and they claim, you know, it's like, we're celebrating Christmas. It's like, well, why, why are you going to give me a hard time about going to church to celebrate then? I mean, look, I love my family and I love the fact that everybody gets together and I like spending time with people. And I think that's important, too. When you celebrate Christmas, you could celebrate with your family and stuff. But what are you celebrating? I'm not celebrating the fact that I have family. I'm celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ. That's more important to me. And you know what? There is another family outside of my physical flesh and blood. We have a spiritual family in the house of God my brothers and sisters in Christ, that, you know what? What a great place to be able to celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So with all the commercialism and all these other things that can get people distracted from, I want to take time. I have five points tonight on things that um, w when I was just, just meditating on the birth of Christ and kind of trying to put myself there and thinking about it, five different things that we ought to be able to not just recognize and honor, but also have in our hearts and our spirit during this time. If you're going to be in the spirit of Christmas, you know, don't allow yourself to, to get in your flesh and start having all this, you know, covetousness and bitterness and wrath and fighting. And, so, and look, let's face it, a lot of that stuff happens during the holidays, right? People are on edge and there's often a lot of fights and arguments and stuff. Let's take a step back, and I know it's the evening of Christmas already, but it's not over yet. And, and let's carry this through, not just today, let's carry it through in our lives. But I want to, you know, the, the number one thing when, I, when I'm preaching on the meaning of Christmas, look down to verse number 11. The number one thing is a Savior is born. That's, a, that's the, the primary uh, reason that, that all of these other things I'm going to talk about is it revolves around the fact that a savior is born. This isn't just a man. This isn't just a great teacher. This isn't just a great prophet. A savior is born. Verse number 11 says, For unto you is born this day in the city of David a savior, which is Christ the Lord. This is a monumentous event. This is a once-in-a-lifetime event, once-in-a-eternity once in event of Jesus Christ coming into this world. It has been the plan of salvation that God had from eternity past for us, knowing the beginning from the end. However, this event is critical and pivotal for, for all of us as a human race. 
We are in need of a Savior. We've always needed a Savior. Sinful man needs a Savior. And this is the day that he came into this world.